you are having rather a bad day. The high cost of maintaining an army has entirely depleted your treasury, and your soldiers have begun to desert. Paradox as a publisher is known for making and publishing PC games, most prominently perhaps the grand strategy titles like Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, Stellaris, etc. Isn't that right, Jake Lukowski and Gareth Evans, who are sitting here with me, Mike Williams? Absolutely yes. right. Um, they do. They have kind of. You can kind of tell a Paradox game just by looking at it, can't you? Almost. It's kind of got that. Um, they've got that kind of niche really narrowed down to themselves pretty much that kind of big grand strategy type thing um well they're also well known for flogging hundreds of dollars worth of dlc on top of those games in particular the big grand strategy titles paradox's dlc plan is is frequently criticized by the gaming community but the company ceo recently kind of admitted there is room for improvement in how they present their dlc but they they did say some other things about it as well so let's take crusader kings 2 as perhaps the prime example of what they do. That game launched in 2012. It's got 24 paid DLC packs. If you want to buy them all, it'll set you back about $300. Yikes. So if you want the full Crusader Kings 2 experience, mm -hmm. $300, which is the price of a console, a Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah a PlayStation a 4 Pro, if you get a good deal. Well, this week, the company CEO, Eba Leungurd, and business development uh, vice president, Shams Georgiani, and they spoke about Paradox's DLC strategy. They did say some things, right? Uh, they were speaking to PC Gamer at PDXCon 2018, and uh, CEO Eba Leungurd said first, for us, it's not so strange that we actually charge people for content and better improvements of the game. With Crusader Kings 2, you could say, yeah, it's a lot of money over the years, but it's also a game with a lot of hours and a lot of gameplay within it. So I can't say that I think it's wrong for charging for the development of the games. Well, some of it, yeah, I can see. I mean, of course, like you can, it's not black and white, but there's some things that you just think like another developer would probably do it for free rather than charge eight quid for it. Like what I mean is like this, you know, What's that game, Europa Universalis 4? There's a save converter from you can take your Crusader Kings 2 rulers over to Europa Universalis 4, which a normal developer might have done it for free. It's a little cool little thing. Hey, you've got one of our games, and you've got another one of our games. You can rule in both. Da -da. They're like, uh, eight quid for that, please. Hey, guys, it took development hours here, guys. You yeah. don't get anything for free. Yeah. Guys, we developed. Guys, listen, yeah. our time isn't free here. That's what it seems to be doing. Every single little thing that they've worked on, they're like, well, they want money for we it. can't give away that It's, it's pseudo-subscription you know? almost, isn't it? It's it's like, you play this game, well, you've got to keep, you got to give us about eight quid every yeah. month or Maybe so. that would be a better monetization model. And uh, this whole discussion always comes from the fact that games are expensive to make these days. That's the source of all of this, right? And a single player um, strategy games like um, Paradox make um, they are very niche and not a lot of, you, can, you can imagine that the player base they don't sell as many as like the God of Wars or whatever so yeah. um, they need to make the money um, and they need to be careful with the money as well I mean developing these games can take a lot of time and so they need to see the benefit of that hmm. releasing um, paid DLC uh, as often as they do is one way of doing it now we're discussing whether that's the right way is there any better ways to do it and that's and that's for us to decide, I guess. Well, here, here's what um, Shams Jojani said. So this is the other kind of um, uh, leader of the, co of the company, I guess. This is what um, they had to say. I argue, go out and find any other game that can offer you this many hours of gameplay at the base cost and never require any more DLC. Um, Jojani says Paradox is, in fact, in the top 1% in the industry in terms of value, whatever that actually means, and that he loves the Green Man Gaming price per hour metric that they've added. Yeah, um, of course he does, because it justifies everything he's talking about with yeah. charging additional money for additional gameplay yeah. time. So he said that, um, which we, we've kind of uh, just discussed before that, um, but he also says this, on the other hand, we're pretty dot dot dot, not bad, but there's room for improvement in how we present our DLC. We have to deal with the issue of people being conditioned by other games and how the industry works. The conditioning is, if you don't get all the content, the thing is broken, you're missing out on something, which is not true in our games. He also says Paradox must improve um, generally there. That's what he's saying, that the Paradox yeah. must improve the presentation of their post-launch expansions to avoid, uh, avoid kind of uh, flooding players, inundating players with DLC, you, which is what is happening. You just look at the store page itself. It's there's just like dozens. It's, it's there's a like really a, long load, list. There's loads and loads of, like, where do you start? If you're buying this game, there's, so, there's loads of expansions, content packs, 
collections, ebooks, DLC, they call, and there's a couple of free LCs there too. It's like, it, it's very confusing. It's overwhelming for somebody who yeah. wants to jump in. I mean, like just psychologically, you look on the fucking Steam page, you feel like you, even though you've got the base game, you haven't got the full picture. Yeah, yeah. You, and it's a bit of a weird. That's where the resentment comes from, isn't it, from the community? Yeah, exactly. You feel like you're missing out, and mm. when you've attached that feeling to a purchase, you feel like a bit. Like you're saying, yeah, resentful, like, oh, I spent 30 quid and they want more money. I mean, admittedly, this is six years in development, and if they worked these six years making Crusade the Kings 3, yeah. they probably would make, I don't know, would they make less money? I um, would say. I yeah, would probably. Because a, a single game purchase, they, they must make loads off these expansions and mm. DLCs um, versus how much they make off the sale of the game price. That's why they give away the game for free for free for at certain times because they make so much money off DLCs and we saw recently their quarter one earnings for this year I don't know if you're going to go into that in a bit but they made loads of money uh, this year yeah, huge uh, the quarter, uh, quarter one this year um, versus last year like 16 million dollars uh, they've re only released one game and the rest of that came out of DLC and expansion packs like how do they make 16 million dollars just on expansion packs and DLCs yeah I mean, but that, that's that's kind of where they're coming from like you're saying they kind of give the way game away for free or for very cheap and stuff uh, a lot of the time it's sort of frequently on sale but and what you also get with this amount of DLC is you get like the various editions if you look at a game like Stellaris right you can get the base version you can get the Nova version there's like there's right. like four different versions of it and then in in crusader kings there's like the 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 grand master collection the master collection or whatever there's just these you so you get the game and then you can get the game and loads of dlc you can get the game and even more dlc or you can get the game and all of the dlc and it, and so that when these things are discounted it's not 300 dollars. it's but it's still very expensive um so they, they're looking at it like from a different point of view uh, to normal games because the Crusader Kings 2 has come out in 2012 and they look at that as a platform for just adding stuff to it it's the kind of game that people will keep playing yeah. you can just keep building on top of it and he obviously disagrees with what you, with what you were saying there Jake about you feeling like it feels incomplete or you feel like you're missing out on it that, that, that's the exact opposite what is, to what they've said and I, I completely disagree with them I agree with you uh, when I'm playing Stellaris I feel like I'm not getting the full experience because I haven't bought, you know, Utopia or Apocalypse or whatever these big um, expansions that, yeah. that, that have come out. And then, yeah. but then you feel like, all right, maybe I'll pick one up. But then I'm looking at all of them and I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm not going to spend all that money on expansions. I could just buy a whole other game. Which one am I going to buy? Yeah. I don't know which one I'm going to buy. I end up just not buying any of them mm -hmm. because I don't want to, you know, you feel like you're missing out. So I think their business model is. It's honestly working because, like you were saying there, guys, they've made a lot of money. They're making loads of money. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's not a, as a casual Paradox customer. Yes. It's not a pleasant experience at all. And looking at that list of DLCs, yeah, just of course, there's far too many. I think that is the problem. And you think about um, people who do f good DLCs, like The Witcher, like the Blood yep. and Wine expansion. That is a meaty. Um, DLC and it's highly, highly um, praised, yeah, praised in the community as well. But it just, it just seems like they're, they're producing so many. And all these DLCs, if you ever play them, they all they do is iterate on whatever what is the foundation yeah. game, and they just change things up a little bit, add a little bit more politics, or add a little bit, a few more mechanics, or whatever. They don't do anything meaty, right? And I think that is the problem. They should. Um, this is my personal opinion obviously they should probably focus on overhauling the game in in a way and take a little bit longer charge a little bit more and make something that is worthy and maybe you won't have you won't be left with 30 decisions to make over DLC yeah, you, yeah, might, exactly. you might only have four or five when you yeah they're well, making they, it as contrived as their fucking menus in their games well the DLC yeah, and that's right boys that's that's exactly right that's exactly right they, they just can't, you've got so many options and like I was saying about Stellaris it just feels like all of the options don't they're not separate modules they build up a, on yeah, top of the game yeah, so yeah. your playthrough is different yeah. whether or not you've bought this DLC and that way you think well I don't want to miss out on this stuff I don't want to miss out on you know having a giant Death Star like space stations in Stellaris or like huge capital ships or whatever mm -hmm. whatever it changes but at the same time I've got to buy three different bits of DLC if I want to get all of the things yeah. that I want so I just end up leaving it and not and, and not picking one up because I, I don't know I, ju I just think it, it, it needs work and if you look at something like Total War as well, so this is another big PC strategy series, not the same company, of course. Creative uh -huh. Assembly, the developers published by Sega. Creative Assembly has just announced some, um, 
you'd say kind of minor DLC for Total War Warhammer 2 um, called The Queen and the Crone. It's £5.99 in the UK. It adds a legendary lord to the Dark Elves called the Hag Queen Crone Helebron and the High Elves um, Everqueen Alariel. And they're essentially two playable characters and playable sub-factions. So you don't get a new faction, you're just using the High Elves or the Dark Elves, yeah. but you've got a different starting location, maybe some different units and, and different conditions and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so it's a new sub-faction, a new quest chain, uh, new elite units, magic items, skill trees, various extra little bits um, with it. So Creative Assembly have got three tiers of DLC, I think. They've got the free stuff, which they just give away periodically. Um, they do that less and less these days. They've got the five ninety nine packs, like the one I've just mentioned, and then they've got the twelve ninety nine um, race packs, which is a full on yeah. new race or or country or faction or something like that. That's how it's been working yeah. with Warhammer anyway. And you also get the Blood and Gore DLC, which is usually about two quid for Blood Blood in the game. If you yeah. want Blood in well, the game, that is not as bad as. Um, as uh, Crusader Kings, in, in my opinion, but it's still a bit much, and it's still because you get multiple games a year at this stage, yeah. and they're getting DLC. Total, the Total War Thrones of Britannia has just come out, and then now we're getting news about DLC for yeah. Warhammer Two, which is the sequel to Warhammer, which came out a couple of years ago. And yeah. so you're, you know, it's it's a, it, it I, is I, equally crowded, but not yeah, in the same way. It keeps going on. Like if, for example, when they bring out the uh, paid DLC, they're also bringing a patch in. So if you did buy the uh, the DLC for Warhammer One, very confusing. The Norska, yeah. you can bring them through now to Warhammer Two. two. So it's kind of <laughs> yeah. making it so you know you you'll you might go and purchase the Norska from yeah. the previous game just to bring it through. So it's kind of added, trying to make it a yeah. little bit better. Oh, you know that DLC you bought from the last game? Well, if you didn't pick it up, hey, you can use it in this game the, now. Yeah. Dragging it, it becomes like this big web, and the the idea of stitching Warhammer One to Warhammer Two, I think, is a good idea. Is like an elegant kind of idea, but then you add all the DLC on top of it just makes it all cluttered and you, it's a bit of a mess. So I've bought DLC for the first game, which didn't work in the second game, like the rest of the factions, because it was broken, but now they've released an update that made it work, so that DLC that I bought a few years ago for a different game now runs on this new game that I've got yeah. in a free patch, which is coming out at the same time as a bit of DLC. Yeah. It's just... It's so complicated, isn't it? it? And, <laughs> from, and from the outside looking in, it just looks like the China grab cash rag it looks like a, a money making process whereas I mean the way that this this dude from Paradox argues is that you're getting so much value for your money in these types of games because the strategy games you can replay them for hours look how valuable they are because of this graph on Green Man Gaming and um, you know we're putting a lot of um, development into these packs so we can't work for free I get that side of it I get the side of it where it looks like the, the grabbing cash but there's no resolution for me like how do they go forward and keep it all uh, I, I don't know. It's, I, I, what, is, I, what is the solution? I would, my personal suggestion of something that I would like, I would maybe consider, is you buy the base game, you can play it forever as much as you want, and if you want access to the other stuff, it all comes in one season pass. Or pass, something. yeah, that and you just, you just, sense. you just whack it on top. Maybe they, maybe it's an annual pass. Maybe you've got to pay it if they want to keep, if they want to keep dropping these things out every year. Something like that would be a bit more palatable f for me. Um, but I'm sure people have got some strong opinions about this and uh, think I'm an absolute moron for suggesting such a thing. And if you think well, that, that's why we're here, we're discussing it. So yeah, exactly. Any, any other be better recommendations or suggestions? Uh, you know, comment. It's interesting to see what um, Paradox have had to say about all this. Anyway, um, I mean, just kind of before we tie up, they they re they cast your minds back to when they had that kind of price hike thing. They do respond and they do communicate with with the audience about that because oh, they did yeah. a massive U-turn yeah. a while ago because they raised the prices of all of their kind of content on uh, on the Steam store essentially for anywhere outside of US dollar currency territories, and they brought them back down after uh, the, a huge backlash. Essentially, it said it was due to currency fluctuation, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was the that was the cause of that. But that was a you know so that shows that there is uh, communication there. Yeah, and it, it's not. It's it's not like they're, they're completely you know being oblivious and stuff. So I guess I guess yeah, there's... the least to listen to community. If you look at yeah. the negative um, reviews spike on on Steam, you can see that they felt the brunt of that, and their games are you know gone from overall 
Greens. recommended down to in, into the mix. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, you know, they had to respond at that point because it's their lifeblood. Like people coming to the Steam store seeing that the game is high recommended and, yeah. and buying it. So. so that's what we think about uh, the way DLC is done on uh, certain PC games, in particular Paradox and uh, Total War. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Do you buy all of these DLCs? Do you kind of buy the games but keep your hands off the DLC? Are you confused by it all? Let us know what you think down in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. There should be another video on your screens right now if you want to watch that. And a link to Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.